People would sit in your quarter panel and then pull up to the car and then look and they're looking for a celebrity and then they see my face. Oh, he's fucking nobody. It's like they're disappointed. It's not somebody famous. After Too Fast, Too Furious, I was figuring out what to do with my car. I was going to do other things with it, take the movie library off it and all that kind of stuff. But I got a crazy offer on a car. This woman called me up and said, I would like to buy your car. I said, it's not for sales. because name your price. I said, $200,000. Okay, give me your account number. I was like, oh, shit. I back myself in a corner. What am I going to do? So then I started thinking, well, you know, I can get a lot of good cars for $200,000. So I started shopping. So I found this place called Fox Motor Cars. So they've got this blue Lamborghini sitting on the showroom with a yellow leather interior. And I knew an interior guy, if I really hated it, I could change it. So I bought this car. So the car's basically passed on transport. One's going to Tennessee, one's coming back. So my wife is asking me, what'd you buy, what'd you buy, what'd you buy? And then this hot rod comes off the back of a truck. I said, I bought that. She goes, no, you didn't buy an American car. And the Lamborghini was parked behind that, so it came out. So the car was quite unique. I was working for Magnaflow at the time. My movie stuff was pretty much over. So I thought I would take it to work one day, especially when Mario Andretti was coming into the office and we were going to have dinner. So I drove the car to the dinner and my boss was looking at me like I was a drug dealer. How are you driving a Lamborghini? But they knew the movie story. So I pull up in this Lamborghini and Mario is on the steps walking to the restaurant. He sees the car pull up because it was in the front of the valet. And he comes walking down. I jump out and I come walking over to my boss, Jerry from Magnaflow. And he goes, is this your car? I said, yeah. You work for Jerry? I said, what do you do? And the marketing director said, like, you pay really well, Hill. <laughs> I said, no, it was a deal that I did with the movie stuff and all kinds of stuff. He goes, I know this car. I said, what do you mean you know it? So I drove this car. So when did you drive it? Because I drove it with Jay Leno. For what? I did running with the bulls with this car last year. Just pictures of him with that actual car, which has now disappeared. I have the VIN number. I would like to find out where it is. That car has now disappeared. Coincidence. And then I think I realized that I myself out of a raise for the next two years at Magnaflow because they probably figured I was making enough money. But it was interesting that he had the car or drove the car and then the car and wound up in my hands. I wound up putting nitrous on that car. But it, obviously he understood that this car now it looked a little bit different than when he had it because the interior down was all tan suede. The, the, the headliner was suede. The dash was suede. The whole thing was suede. Everything was carbon fiber in the car. Now I had custom made carbon fiber pieces. But he recognized the car because it was pretty unique. It was an SV Monterey edition with a certain wheel on that car and all that kind of nonsense, which was, a, by the way, it was a horrible car. It was horrible. Uh, got all four brakes locked up at a stop light. I had to get out a 10 millimeter and open up the brake lights to get the thing to on the go tow truck. Uh, I sold it not long after that. I don't know what happened to the car. So I went out and bought a yellow 0160, which I thought was a terrific car until one day I was washing the car and I hear this. <laughs> How do you pop a tire sitting in the driveway? Didn't pop a tire, pop, popped an air conditioning line, which is in the driver's side rear wheel well. That's where the air conditioning line runs in the car. Problem is, as you probably know, is the tray is sealed underneath, so it has to be cut and taken down. So I took it to a guy who was a fabricator. He said, no, 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 we take the, the wheel liner out of it and everything, and then we can make a splice and put it in there. My blue Diablo was always going to be a bonus conductor. You know, get interesting kind of attention in that car. You know, Cougars up in Orange County, you know, divorcees, Real Housewives of Orange County. It's everything you see on the TV. It's really real. So they pull up next to you, or they come make a conversation with you and all that kind of stuff. I'm married. I don't give a shit about it. Other, other kind of stuff. People would sit in your quarter panel and then pull up to the car and then look and they're looking for a celebrity and then they see my face. Oh, he's fucking nobody. It's like they're disappointed. It's not somebody famous. So there was, there was a lot of that. It just wasn't a good track car. I was driving on 405. Remember when Platinum Motors was around before that scandal? So I'm driving right up that way. I'm heading over to the, I'm on 405 at John Wayne, getting ready to go over to Platinum Motors to get make a service call. CHP gets on the freeway right there, pulls up next to me, sees a bar coming down with two big nitrous bottles between me and the passenger, Stop, pulls me over. What do you pull me over for? I'm literally doing nothing wrong. Just, what's going on with the bottles here? I said, would you believe I'm on oxygen and I need to keep it close? He goes, not for a second. <laughs> He was cool. I said, I always ask a question and I get pulled over. Are you a car guy? Because if they will, I will open the hood. We have a discussion. It's got me out of many, many tickets. And if you're just cordial and you admit fault, kind of generally speaking, probably not the way to do it, but I've been very, very lucky. So we're having a discussion about Lamborghinis and all that kind of stuff. He says, well, you're going over to Platinum Motors over there. He goes, oh, I got to go over there and check it out. So he follows me over to Platinum Motors. I pull up, right? 
and he just kind of pulls out in the squad car. If you remember where it's right, where it's at, it's right next to the freeway. So he made a U-turn, parked on the other side of the street. And then when I walked in, the lady asked me, the lady who sends you to service, she goes, is he waiting for you? I said, no, my, my business with him is concluded. <laughs> the other day, I was story, I was dating this Chinese girl. And uh, we went to go see my friends in Las Vegas. And I took the Diablo out there. I'm coming back. It's night on the on the 15. And, you know, it's got 300 ZX headlights, right? But everybody bags on that car for that. Tell you what, that worked pretty good because I was at 202 miles an hour indicated at night. And she's sleeping. And then you know how loud that thing is inside the car at full throttle. It's wide open throttle. And she's sleeping. That's how I knew that relationship wasn't going to work. And it didn't. It didn't pan out as it turns out. But, you know, it's a show-off car. It's just right. the guy who bought it, Steve Ellsworthy, he's still in Orange County. I get to see it occasionally. He goes to Cars and Coffee and so forth. He's still a caretaker of that car.